how do you how do you focus how do you handle all these i wake up and there's like freaking 10 to 15 symbols that are running or are in play and then i gotta locate them and now I'm, a, I'm spending like a yeah my kids college tuition fund on locate fees so what do you do what do you do guys well we gotta get back to basics man first of all check out my check out our youtube our youtube channel my investment club in there we talk about process a lot and so part of the process is to figure out what stocks to trade so one of the biggest hurdles that you have when you start is you're overwhelmed you have no idea what to trade so you buy a freaking scanner right so you're buying the scanner you're paying two dollars a month for a scanner don't know what the fuck you're doing all the scanner is doing is showing you tickers to lose it's like walking into uh, a Chinese gambling hall and now the guy goes okay you got 20 games to choose from and you don't know how to play any of these games you put your money down oh you win you put your money down you lose so it's straight up gambling that's exactly how trading is with a scammer <laughs> a scammer <laughs> that's that as well so a scammer is a pump room right but a scanner trading with a scanner is like walking to a Chinese a Chinese gambling hall I don't know what the hell you're doing you're just basically gambling guys Scanner is, is useless. Get rid of the scanner. Use that money to join an educational room like MIC. We actually teach you a trade. We actually post our scanners. We Other people post the scanners. There's really no reason you should be paying for a scanner. Get rid of your scanner. Number one, if you're fucking in, if you have a scanner and you're on this webinar and you're not in MIC, geez, I don't know what to tell you. You've been sold a lot of bullshit and I'm pretty sure that you're not a consistent trader. Chasing, chasing. I used, I mean, I have a scanner. I look at my scanner maybe twice a day. Okay, when I wake up, and then when I'm bored as hell during the day, and that's how I get caught. So a scanner doesn't really do anything for you because you don't know what, how to trade the stock. You don't know anything about the stock. It just shows you the ticker of the stock. I mean, everybody has a scanner. People are posting scanners left and right. So for $200, for 200 bucks, a month I think you're better having a set of thousand eyeball scanners in the room doing an, doing analysis for you right so that's the first thing you do you get rid of your scanner and then when when you see or even okay let's say, let's say you do have a scanner or you, or you have a free scanner you take a look at the top place okay guys and so you, I always tell people narrow down to your top three focus on just basically if you want to focus focus on top one Nail that stock. The key is to wake up early. You know, I see people waking up with like, right when the market opens, and they're like, oh, what's in play, what's in play? How the hell are you supposed to trade a stock? They have no idea what's going on. That's called gambling. These are degenerate losers I walk in and go, what's in play, guys, what's in play, guys? You know, I, I used to be one of those. I used to be the guy that's always walking in the room and going, hey, what's in play, what's in play? You know, because my whole thing was, okay, whatever's in play, I'm going to play it. I'm doing no due diligence. I'm doing no no analysis. So the, the key to successful trading, you know, we talk about, oh, trade the first hour. You know, you can trade the first hour. But people don't talk about the fact that we wake up an hour and a half, two hours before the market opens. Sometimes more. Alex has been up a long time already. Analyzing plays. Figure out exactly his entries, his exits. You know, predefining his risks, knowing his lines, knowing the news that comes out, looking up the filings. So basically, we know the plan of attack. It's like going to war. When you go to war, you just walk in the battlefield and go, okay, where, where's the enemy? I'm going to go kill the enemy. The enemy's been sitting there for weeks, months, years, plotting the battle plans. Same concept for trading, okay? You have these guys walking, coming into the open, and they're supposed to be an educator. Oh, what's in play? I'm gonna start getting on the microphone and pumping to you. That's a straight up scammer, guys. Okay, so you, when you're talking about what stocks to trade, because there's so many stocks, I really don't know your style. So that's where coming at least an hour before the open to take a look at the possible plays. So you start out with, let's say 10 possible plays on the scanner. Then you narrow it down to five, then to three. And then you have a plan for each three, okay? Then you do one if you if you have you know. Then you choose one, or you have three to choose from, and which setup comes to you? 
that you plan is the one you take. So sometimes I don't know what I'm going to take. I could trade them all. I, put, I place fantasy orders out and I place them all. But a lot of people don't have the resources to do that. And so my suggestion is start off with three max. Whittle your way down from 10 to three. And then if you want, put fantasy orders in all three. Small size on each. Or if you don't have enough capital, wait until it's near. So you have your plan tax. So what, what I like to tell people is try this, guys. Get index cards like when you study school. Write down your plan. Write down your plan before you open. The market opens. Write down on that index card. This stock, entry, exit, stop loss. That's all you need. Exit. Entry, exit, stop loss. Okay, the exit is for the win. And write that down. And then what happens now is at the end of the trade, you mark, you write down your notes, and now you have a collection of index cards of your trades. Or do it on the spreadsheet. Do it on the computer spreadsheet. By doing that, you can actually track down what you're doing. And then you put notes on that. It's like learning. But writing down the plan actually solidifies and helps you with your trades. That's what Alex writes his watch list. So each morning, you guys should have your own watch list. And the way you do is you have your own watch list and you compare it to Alex's watch list and the other mods watch list. You're like, oh, okay, Alex got this price. Why is he at this price? Why do I have this price? And this way you can kind of reverse engineer as well and learn. So writing down something, wow, look how nice this this is, right? I'm gonna take a video of this. Write things down. It goes into your brain much easier. Yeah, I got a bright idea. That's pretty funny. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh shit, let me try. Okay, it's hot. Audio is good? Yeah, weird. Instagram been weird. Okay, thanks, Sai. So, the guys that I've done in the past when I started with any anything in school is to write things down on an index card. And same thing with trading. Now you have a log. And we actually have trader logs and report cards in MIC. <laughs> hey, what's WORX at, guys? Just kind of curious. So any questions on that? Any questions on how I'm able to get a top three list for myself? And also, compare that to Alex's and the other moderators watch list at MIC. If you're absolutely lazy or you're late, that's what I sometimes do. <laughs> when I'm, I'm running late, I just whip up Alex's watch list and I, right there. It's like a cheat code, guys. It's like a cheat code. So you join MIC for the scanner and for the watch list and that pretty much pays itself. As crazy as it sounds, guys, it's, you know, man, trading does not have to be complicated. Trading is actually very simple. It's never easy. The, the, the hard part is the discipline. It's like me. <laughs> I was a, I should have left. I lost some money back on trying to long XELA. It didn't go as I planned, so I lost some money. But you know what, man? I had a plan, and I took my loss. But you know what? I didn't have the discipline to leave. But you know what, man? I was risking a little bit, so I was okay. It was a good risk reward on that bounce. It didn't bounce, so I got out. <laughs> WRX. A WRX is a broken stock. And so I'm just kind of tracking it, see where it bounces. VWAP is in the $4 range, I think, 407 or something like that. 
You guys, I want to keep it short and light. Any questions? I'm going to bring some member on. Maybe bring someone on to ask a question. How do you make money during the summer when things are crazy? Exactly. That's exactly how, guys. You have your top list. And I'll give you an example. These guys are blowing up. Short selling. They're short selling day one runners. And look at these day one runners. They run a lot, a lot, a lot more than you think. My suggestion is wait for the top. Wait for the day twos. Wait for the broken plays. Then you short. As a new trader, if I was a new trader, guys, I would solely... I would solely do what? Stick to the backside. I don't want to show you my backside. <laughs> so if you're a long bias trader, you go strong stocks. The open, day one open, low floaters. Take advantage of the pumpers. They have the Discord room guys pumping. They have the freaking chat room guys pumping. They have the YouTube streamers. So take advantage, nail and bail. How you make money in any market, guys. Nail and bail. I have people crying. Oh, these big traders are crying. Oh, blah, blah, blah. the zombie. I'm a no shit. We've been talking about zombies for only like, what, half a decade now? Now you're finally realizing that zombies are real? <laughs> so they don't nail and bail. They're going for the home runs. You know, the markets are changing. Markets are changing. Adapt, guys. You know, I, I, the worst thing you see is a top trader, supposed, supposed top trader, start to cry whenever they lose. Blaming shit on algos, blaming shit on manipulation. Everything's manipulated, guys. I don't see them crying when they win money. When they win money, they're the best in the world, and you know, and they brag about it. But when they lose, it's like I hate those kind of people, guys. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I can't stand those kind of people. It's like win with honor, lose with class, guys. I'm gonna bring someone on, guys. Raise your hand. If you want on? Maybe I'll, Maybe we can uh, bring on a. Someone random that I haven't met before, and maybe we can help them figure out one of their training issues. Or if you're skeptical and you think I'm bullshit, <laughs> I would love to talk to you too. Don't worry, I won't, I won't grill you too badly. But at the end of the day, guys, it's discipline over else. But that's why you need the room. I mean, I've I seen guys become uh, successful. Uh, learning MIC and then and then they they quit MIC and then I'm like what the hell are you doing? You know it's not that much fucking much money, but the moment they quit, now they change their process. Because part of the winning routine is to be surrounded by winners. Why would you learn and then quit? I just don't get it. It's like you, I mean, that it's the ego, guys. Oh, I don't need you guys anymore. I used you guys. Uh, I learned from you guys. And now I don't need you anymore. You know that that's a sort of mentality, in my opinion, that stops growth. If I'm learning from someone, I mean, why would I want to leave someone who has made me successful? You know, unless they, they think that they can do better without you. And that's the, that's the weird thing, but. Whoa. I don't know, this guy's a real guy. His name is so long. I'm gonna try to bring a, a guy with the longest IG name I've ever seen. A lot of the guys want to be the smartest in the room or the richest in the room. I, I want to be the dumbest guy in the room, guys. I want to be the dumbest guy in the room. I want to be the poorest guy in the room. I mean, that room is fucking stacked. Imagine if Michael Jordan was in the basketball team and he's the worst player. Holy cow. What kind of space jam competition is that, right? Well, uh, raise your hand. Someone else? Who wants else to be on? I, uh, I, I tried to bet the other guy and didn't come on, so. It looked like, I don't know, he's real or not or a bot or. Raise your hand. Who wants to be on? Yeah, no one wants to go in. And we'll end it early today, guys. And then we'll see you tomorrow at Tasha's webinar. He's unable to join. This guy has a real. Dude, this guy is a. Jackpot Bones. I don't know how to get you on. It, it didn't let me. Who wants to come on? I'm going to uh, pick random people. This is weird. I can't get people on this. It's something broken with the IG Live, guys. Jeez.
Last try with this guy. Looks like it's from Europe. Hello. Hey, Paul. Hello. I, we can't see you. Is this all right? Uh, yeah, the camera. Oh, hey. How you doing? Hey. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, my friend? What's your name? Uh, Chantala. My name is Chantala. I'm from Austin, Texas. Oh, Texas. How you doing? <laughs> uh, quite well, man. I'm, I'm doing okay. Yeah. Try to make a uh, hundred dollars a day. That's all. That's uh, all you need, man. The, the blueprint. The blueprint for a thousand dollars a day is a hundred dollars. If you can make consistently a hundred dollars, you can now start to make two hundred, three hundred, right? Right. Yeah. That. That's a plan. Yes. Are you in MIC? Yeah. Yeah. Lifetime member. I'm o over a year now. Oh, what's your name there? Can you remember? Chantala. Can see you. Chan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, that's good. So tell us, tell everybody how, how is the things are going. This is the first time we ever talked, so it's great. Well, uh, let me see. Uh, at first, I have difficult time with my account with uh, IB uh, Interbrokers thing. And my computer, my system, I, I have uh, a laptop that uh, use hard drive, but uh, have this, uh, add some more screen, you know. And I've been trading uh, paper for six months, paper money. Yes. On long, or I mean on short. And then uh, I have difficult time with uh, re reinstall my uh, add some more money in, you know, like 35K. Oh, okay. And, yeah, yeah. But I decided not to add it on, only 25K. Now I'm, I'm doing long now. Instead of short. Okay, how things going? What are you learning? I'm I'm just learning just with with your people, with your guys, <laughs> with the club. What what are you what are you uh, what is your strategy that you you've been uh, finding success? So tell so this is a good example because you started with uh, very little knowledge, right? Yeah. So no, no experience. So how so tell us how you were able to now even place a trade and to understand what's going on. Well, I I try to do a minimal share when, when you add it on. Like for example, when you purchase on the time like eight thirty, it's usually low, right? Uh, you wait until the market open. If a pre market, you kind of if you want a profit, uh, be a big number. You be kind of ag aggressive. You know, by the time the market open, you you kind of slow down a little bit because it it can go up and down uh, very rapidly. You know, that way is you risk management is more critical than when you know. But for right now, I'm just trying to make a P and L as uh, uh, keep it going. Like a hundred, hundred fifty dollars a day, you know? How how are you doing on that? How how are you doing on that goal? I'm I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm consistent. I, wow! I, so in you, the week, so you okay? So tell us how in, you do this month. This month, this month, I'm green, man. I'm I'm seventy five percent. I would I would win at seven to seventy five percent. Uh, wow! Green, yeah. Wow. So you went from knowing nothing about stocks to, to paper trading to learning for six months, and now you're consistently profitable. Yes. That's amazing, yes. my friend. That just shows that anybody can do it with hard work, right? Oh, man, that's good. It, it adds up fast, right, Chad? Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm trying not to be too aggressive because uh, from July till September, it probably okay but since September, it probably sell off the market, the condition of the mental attitude of majority of people, you know, you kind of uh, get that into your head and then you trade, uh, go along with the trend, you know. That's, yes. 
I try. So this is I try. this is great. You, you know what? You know what I noticed? I noticed there's so many different ways to trade to make money. So Chan just found his niche. He figured out, you know, the best times of days to make his trades work. This is what I love. You know, once you start to learn, you know, the how stocks move, the lines and all that, now you create your strategy. I, I love the way you do it. You're, you're, you're not being greedy. I love, I love hearing the key words like risk management. Right now, you're just managing risk. You're now right. a professional risk manager. So a better, a better term than day trader, in my opinion, because when people hear day trading, they think gambler. A good term is I am a professional risk manager. So I love that. I love the fact that you, you, you are now managing your risk. Cause, you know, we, you, so you have hard stops. Do you use hard stops, max daily loss? Yes, yes. I have, I have different screen. I ready to, uh, to do a hard stop. I, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I have, I have screen that a hard stop all the time. Most, I mean, most all the time, but I'm, I know, I know I'm, I am a trader now. I walking, I'm not running, I'm not jogging, but I'm walking as a trader. I know how to use my step. Wow. That's, I mean, that's great. Yes. Tell us, uh, uh, what did you, what did you trade today? And your mindset? What? What did you trade today? Can you say that again? I can hear you. <clears throat> what, what stock did you trade today? Today, I trade Zila. Yes, X-E-L-A. So tell us your mindset and what did you do? Let me see. Uh, I still have my screen on Zila. On Zila, I, I get in. I... Uh, I I I get in around nine o'clock. yeah, I get in at nine o'clock at twenty five chair. What what uh what price? Uh three eighty. Wow. Three eighty two. Wow, that's yeah. pretty low. Where'd you sell? I sell at uh nine. Let me see. Nine fifty at four nineteen. Oh, that's good. So how much? That you know what, man? That's like what eighty dollars already. You almost got your goal, right? Yeah, yeah. I I I make uh, I make a uh, seventy two dollars. That's great. That's great. So you you see, guys, he's Chan is learning to walk first. He's not gonna run and trip and fall. So the moment you become super consistent, now you can slowly add size over time. And notice how much he's making with very small size. So that's, that's the beauty. You know, you don't need big size to make money, guys. You know, $200 a day is a great goal. And that's $50,000 a year, you know. That's great supplemental income with very small size. When you get more comfortable, then you can start doing 100 shares, 200 shares, 500 shares, etc. But this is a great start, man. You, from someone that knows absolutely nothing about stocks a year ago, to now being able to be—you're now a self-sufficient trader, Chad. That's that's so amazing. Yeah, I I have uh, I use technical. What is the uh, mathematician of Italian mathematician? Like if if I go like if it drops seven seven cent, I add it on like. One one eight two three four five eight thirteen thing like that, you know. If it drop like I, seven times two is fourteen, but it drop fifteen, I add another twenty five chair, right? If it, if it drop again, like twenty one chair, one twenty one cent, I add some more, you know. You kind of try, you check your emotion, you know. You don't panic. Sometimes I go get petty because I I've been lost. I have lost for uh, the most big number that I lost is fifteen hundred dollars, right? And since then, I try not to lose that much. I mean, try to gain and try to gain and consistent, and I can. But when you lost, you lost. You take like everybody else, you know, take a walk. Did but, you? Uh, uh, have you made back that loss? 
did I make it back to the lot when I lost? No, no, up to uh, today. Right. So you said you you lost it back then, right? So, so during yeah. that time, you made it back. I make it back about halfway back. Yeah, halfway back, not completely yet. So, when did you lose? I just want to see the time frame. Oh, I lose, I lose. Uh, I think in back in May, back in May, yeah, late in the middle of May. May, okay. Um, yeah. When did when did you join MIC? I joined MIC in April. Uh, April. Uh, I tried to trade in April, two thousand twenty. Okay, so did you lose? Oh, you lost it on this year. This year, I still lost. Yeah. Okay, but you slowly make it back. So, but you know why you lost? So maybe you go through the mindset of what happened. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Because because of that loss. Because of that loss that I have, that's why it make it make me a little bit uh, caution. I use a little bit more caution instead of uh, be too aggressive on certain time of the day. I mean, not just the day, but certain time of um, uh, the market in general. You know, the market in general. Back then, it was uh, well people. Try to uh, you know the COVID nineteen still start you know two thousand two thousand twenty in April, in beginning of the COVID nineteen, and yes. and the market is kind of calm you know, and all of a sudden volatile, all of a sudden it just heated up real quick you know, and that's why I lost. Yeah, I, we we yeah. can't see you, Chad. Put put you on. <laughs> I think I'm looking at you. Uh... It looks like a, a fur jacket or something. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you can see the camera? <laughs> yeah, that would yeah. be good. But, but, I, but I, you I, know what? I, I, I love the fact, so we always talk about this. You either win or you learn. So, you know, having that loss completely made you a better trader because now you learn from it. Absolutely. And that's, and that's you know what? In an early of a career, that is a great thing to, to be able to lose. But you know what? He didn't lose that much. I, I bet you a lot of you guys have lost a lot more than he did. And now he's on his way to being making it all back, being a consistent trader and learning learning very early on risk management. So that's you know, that's good, man. You know, any anything else we need we can do for you, let us know. So, okay. Uh, thanks for coming out and um hey do this. Hit up uh, Oliver. We're gonna get you some swag. Maybe you can use some MSC shirt for you and your family. <laughs> okay. Um uh Get in touch with Oliver to get a T-shirt yeah. or something. A hat. Yeah, yeah, we'll give you a hundred dollars of whatever you want to buy. So go to the MIC oh. store, my friend. All right, thanks, thanks, uh, Bao. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Thank you All for coming right, on, my friend. Bye, bye. All right, bye. All right, guys. That you guys heard it there. I mean, any any age, young, you know, retired, uh, wherever you are in the world, you're able to trade. And the key, once again, I keep talking about this. MIC is the only one for some reason. We're the only ones talking about risk management. And Chan hit it out of the park by talking about risk management. You know, the, the best thing he could do for his trading early on was to take that loss. And now he built risk management around that loss, guys. I see guys on Twitter refusing to learn risk management, and they blow up. You know what? That's the last time that Chan probably is going to hit something that big of a loss because Chan is now very, very aware before he takes that big loss. So – Great job, Chen, and I'll see you guys. Okay, so the key takeaway, guys, once again, is risk management. You are not a day trader. You are a risk manager. I'll see you guys. Thanks for joining.